Shalom. Welcome back to Code Search. All right, this is the one, <laughs> folks, to be quite honest with you. I would rather be standing in front of my first sergeant in the Marine Corps taking a chewing, a rear end chewing from my first sergeant, a scary Marine, <clears throat> than have to do this video and tell you what I'm about to tell you. When I originally did this search, uh, it was not for, for broadcast. It was not for, for, for to um, put on YouTube. It was a personal search, uh, a personal, as well as all of these searches have been since I started, was just led. Now, I hadn't intended on sharing this, but I did mention last week after a uh, certain someone on YouTube who has a free code program, uh, uh, free program, and putting out tables saying that rapture is going to happen in May, that Passover is in May, and all of these things, folks, is an agent of deception, period. I don't care what his heart is. The word says a man's heart is deceitful and wicked. He's not going to tell you the truth because he don't know there's no truth in him. But I'm going to tell you the truth even if it hurts. And I have to tell you this. I have to show you this. Now, this is going to bring a lot of people against me. That's fine. I have to tell you this. I have to share this with you. People like Perry, big names, Perry Stone, John Hagee, all these big names who are pushing this doctrine because they were taught this doctrine doesn't mean it's um, it's what the Father intended. And so that's what led me to go search this thing out. And so you may have noticed in, in the past months that I stopped talking about rapture because there's a misunderstanding there and I discovered that. And it, and it came in through the doctrines of men who handed it down. This happened before you and I even existed in the 1800s. And oh, there are going to be some of you say, well, this was, this was taught before then. Yeah, it was, and it was wrong. It, it started around the Presbyterian uh, movement the, where the Pentecostals came from. Darby and McDonald and then Cyrus Schofield took off with it. I grew up with the Schofield Bible, folks. <clears throat> I told you I was saved a Baptist. I was raised Pentecostal in the Church of God. And I had a Schofield Bible. And I knew it front to back. And I believed every word in it. And then the Father has brought me to a place where I can search these things out. And I believe that's one of the reasons why the codes are there. The codes are not there to predict the future. But I do believe they validate His Word. Because with any one scripture, you can have a thousand different interpretations. Now, the Word says, we know who the, the author of confusion is, so it's not the Father. But He indeed knew there would be confusion in the end. And I believe the codes is a, play a part in clarifying things. Some of the initial searches that I did, I wanted to know who the second witness was. I was looking for the Antichrist. All these things from Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse, which is obvious to me that Yeshua was speaking cryptically and he was giving us a message, a clear outline of the end days. And it is very searchable and I've shown you that in this channel. You can search each one of those terms he gives you End of days, uh, signs of thy coming, time of sorrows, um, abomination of desolation, and there are several others. Um, so, boy, this is really hard. You cannot know how hard this is. Because I know it's going to crush many of you. And when I discovered it and, and saw it, it crushed me as well. Because I came from disbelief. But you got to understand. Remember the, the graphic I showed you from the root. And how the Catholic Church got involved. And the Jesuits. And then anything downstream after that was, you know, even though it broke, broke away from the Catholic Church. These branches, these tributaries, which became, uh, you know, denominations and doctrines of men. Um, 
is is the whore of Babylon. This is the uh, what is mentioned in Revelation. It all came from the Catholic Church. Is not what the Father intended. We have to go back to the root, folks. Why do you think six sevenths of the church body in Revelation is in the tribulation? And everybody wants to be that one seventh to not go through it. Are you barley? Because we're talking about grains here. We're not talking about a bride. That's another subject that is completely different than harvest. The marriage supper of the bride is different than harvest time, folks. But things get overlaid and things get overinterpreted by man and doctrines of men creep in and uh, before you know it, you got confusion. It doesn't matter what the intention of the heart was. I can take you to the story of strange fire where the Father led me on this. Let's just go there now. It's a great example of a man's heart. What is the meaning of strange fire? We're talking about the two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu. Stay with me, folks, because we're going to get into this table and I'm going to break it down for you. Don't unsubscribe. Don't shut the, the, the video off now because you're mad. Please stay with me because I'm breaking this to you. And I may be the only one standing on this when I come out the other side. I don't know of any other. I've seen one guy on the internet that the Holy Spirit led me to. Michael Snyder, who wrote a book called The Rapture Verdict. Because I was terrified I was going to be the only one who was going to stand on this truth. So let's hear. In order to understand the phrase, strange fire, we must review the story in Leviticus in which it appears the first in a tabernacle had been erected, and Aaron was doing a lot of sacrificing per Yahuwah's instructions. Leviticus 8. Uh, one day, two of Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, came along and offered incense with strange fire. You've heard this before. The word translated strange means unauthorized, foreign, or profane. It was, it was uh, inserted into, you know, Nadab and Abihu, we only could surmise, may had a good intentions behind their uh, offering. They obviously didn't hold to what you had said and, and gave them specific instructions. They decided to, uh, like Emerald would say, kick it up a notch and add to what was required. Yuhua not only rejected their sacrifice, he found it so offensive that he consumed the two men with fire. This was an automatic death penalty for these two. Were they in sin? Were they, were they wicked men? No, these were priests. These were, they were in the tabernacle. They were rubbing elbows with the Most High. And yet he gives them a death penalty, a, a death sentence, a death penalty on the spot. After Nabat and Abihu was killed, Moses explained to Aaron why Yahuwah had done such a harsh thing. This is what Yahuwah spoke when he said, Among those who approach me, I will show myself Kadosh. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. The exact nature of the profane fire isn't known. But since it was the fire that was that, excuse me. But since it was the fire, then taking the fire, excuse me, I can't see my, there it is. But since it was the fire that the, was unauthorized, it could be that Nadab and Abi, I need to be wearing glasses doing this, were burning the incense with fire of their own making rather than taking fire from the altar, as specified in Leviticus 19.12. Or it could be, and speculating here, or it could be that the two men came into the tabernacle drunk, therefore could not remember what was a violation and what was not. So they were giving them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were just out of their mind. Um, but even that would be profane before you. Oh, you can't uh, come before the creator of the universe um, profane and, and defile. 
It was a sign uh, of their disregard and utter holiness. Uh, excuse me. It was a sign of their disregard and the utter holiness of Yahuwah and the need to honor and obey him in a solemn and holy fear. Uh, the, their carelessness and irreverence was their downfall. And that's true. Their carelessness and irreverence was their downfall. There's two means I'm telling you here. We're going to talk about Darby, and we're going to talk about people who get on YouTube and say, I got a word from the Lord, and, um, and, and it came on such and such time, and on such and such date, and here's what it says. And uh, my children, you've all heard it, my children, hear me. The rapture is close, and they're telling you about rapture, and they have no understanding of what they're doing. Let me show you, let me show you Darby's folly, and it's staggering what appears in this table, because my original search term was Darby's rapture. The rest appeared when I found that. It's called uh, post priori terms, something you find after the accident, after you find the term. So uh, it sealed it for me when I saw this, especially the the term. I mean, running in the another the opposite direction of the axis term, meeting with three letters that read in either direction is not good, but it extends the axis term tremendously. So it was to me, it was like two fingers pointing to these three letters. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Here, these three letters right there. Here's the axis term. It comes down this way. Let me blow it up so everyone can see it. I want to make sure even my theological or theologian brothers have got that education. Ah. Look, the wrong one. Bring your best Hebrew. Perry Stone, take a look. Darby was wrong. And what he did. I want to show you exactly where this appears because it's, it, it's all significant. Every bit of it. it didn't, it, and it's only in the Torah. Let's be clear about that for those of you who say, oh, there's no codes in the Tanakh. I searched the whole Tanakh, but the bulk, the, every bit of the access term comes up in the Torah. That for, immediately struck me as odd. I didn't, I didn't expect that. It's only there one time. Darby's rapture. Uh, in that word, you see that shin? Shalom is the English word we're using searching here, which has nothing to do with Netketef, Asaf, Gabbats, all the Hebrew words of a harvest. It's a translation of a word, Harpazo, where they get rapture, which doesn't appear, by the way, in the scriptures. But it does appear coded. Let's be clear about that. It does appear coded. The word rapture in English, in the English translations, like you've been seeing in another channel, does not appear in the King James. It does not appear. I don't care what the guy's telling you. It doesn't. You can break the word up in, into, you know, three letters here and four letters here. And yeah, you'll find those groups of letters. But does that mean you found the word? No. You are manipulating and playing with witchcraft and strange fire. That's why I said you have to search these things without an objective. I mean, without a, without an agenda. I believe in rapture. I believe in pre-trib and uh, mid-trib. It was where I had moved because I could not reconcile. If you've been with this channel, you know from watching this, this timeline I've been trying to, to reconcile why rapture wasn't lining up with anything else. I was having a hard time with it. And I got my answer is because it was inserted. It's foreign. It's not supposed to be there. Let me read you the rest of the access term that I discovered. Now, these three words, uh, three letters, Sarah in one direction, means rebellion, perversion, um, uh, rebelliousness or destruction. It's not good. So we have Darby's rapture rebellion or perversion. Now, let's read. Now, this is what I saw. I saw Yom, which is the day in the day. Yom. Those three letters. 
So then it caught my attention, so I read the rest. And so here's what we have. We have actually two axis terms coming to, together and meeting at, uh, at the end of Shalob, which is rapture, um, and sitting on top of Sarah, which is rebellion. And it reads this way. Keep in mind, Darby's rapture stopping here at this verse. Reading in the other direction, in the day he crossed over into destruction. Stopping at this verse, 90 degree angle. Remember that verse. So I went and looked at the top. Stuck out. Very important part in our history as mankind, because sin creeps in here capping the top of this verse. But I want to finish reading the rest of the terms before we get into that. We've got Shabosh or Shabush, sharing the shin in Shalom. Now the word Shabush means confusion, mistake, blunder, disruption, and error. I have found every word in Hebrew possible for deception in here. It's here. Some of them in a huge, um, like this this one here, stopping where Shaker is, which is false, uh, like uh, Shaker Navi, a false prophet. Shaker, look at how Shaker, on the cuff, right here, goes back and forth on itself. You've got Shin, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Kuf, Resh. It goes back upon itself. It's almost like a, an X saying right here. So it's saying false doctrine. You got doctrine right there. False doctrine. Very close proximity. That is proximity, folks. Best meaning proximity. False doctrine is clear. With Shobos over here, I found the word kets, which is destruction. Uh, it also means uh, it's an abbreviation of achret yamin, which is in the end, the end of days. It could also be the abbreviated form of the end of days, the end. Uh, but I saw something more. I saw the word olam, the world. And these three letters here, the mem vav kof, is scoffing, the scoffing of the world in the end. Now, there are those that scoff and say, where is the promise of his coming? But that's not rapture, folks. That's second coming. And I know there's you are, are right now wanting to throw scriptures at me. We're going we're gonna to tackle those. I did do research. We're going to tackle those. Because if you look at those very same scriptures you're about to throw at me and continue reading, you will see tribulation. I get it all the time. We're, we're not going to go through tribulation. We're not appointed to wrath. First of all, that's too different words, wrath and tribulation. It's a hard truth, I have to tell you, folks. And it's not easy. You, want, you think I want to be that guy? Standing alone? I have to. If no one else does. This was strange fire brought in. Let me read to you uh, some of the verses here. The very top one. Like I said, this is where sin crept in. This is Genesis 3.23. Therefore, said Adonai Elohim sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. They're kicked out of the garden at this point. They now know that good and evil which were, they never were intended to know. Uh, the very next verse, I didn't highlight it, but I, I've gone through each one of them. I highlighted a few that I thought was important, like this one right here, which is a reference to Ephraim in the end, like you have uh, Wachetz in the end. It talks about Ephraim. Jacob is blessing his, his seed. And we've just been talking about this and going to be reading from this book tonight where these tribes ended up. Maybe one of them. 
He's blessing them right here. That's why I had that one highlighted. But the one I didn't have highlighted, let's go to this. Because it's really important to see these things. This is um, Genesis 22, 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father. He said, my father. And he said, here am I, son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. Where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Now, I thought this was really interesting because I was just talking to Darla about this. There's a level of deception here. Uh, it's, it's called a soft truth. It's not a full-out lie. Abraham doesn't, doesn't say to him, and you see his response here. He says, my son, you who will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went on. Now, mind you, uh, this is not a lad. This is not a six-year-old boy. This is, you know, I mean, it's more than likely a teenager. So he is able to ascertain what is going on. His father didn't come out and say, Son, you're the lamb. And i got to take you up here and i got to put a knife in your throat. That's the hard truth. The soft truth was, you who will provide. So there's a level of deception. I, wanted to, I thought it was interesting to point that out because it's, that's exactly what's going on here with this doctrine. It's a level of deception. It's, you know, there's not that there's not a rapture. There's, there is a rapture. There's a catching away, folks. But it doesn't happen where you think it does. There's no secret rapture. I just say, well, Yeshua, he's not going to beat, up, beat his wife. Yeah, but they thresh the wheat. The wheat gets threshed. There's two separate things. We go through a harvest before we go to a marriage. You're either these, you're either barley, wheat, grapes, and olives. Barley is handled very gently. It doesn't take a lot to harvest barley. It's very fragile. Wheat has a harder outer shell. Once it, it is cut, once it's cut down with the tares, mind you, the tares and the wheat grow together. The wheat bows to the wind. The tares will not bow. So when it is harvest, the tares are removed and cast into the fire. The wheat is valuable. You are not cast into the fire. You're cast into the threshing floor because he loves you, because you're valuable. Otherwise, he would just burn the whole field. So you are threshed. And then once you're threshed, you go through what's called a tribulum. We're a tribulum, a board. And Perry Stone got that right. With stones on it, it's pulled across the grain to get the outer shell off. It's a process you have to go through. That grain on the inside is valuable. And it's taking from the chaff. The chaff is burned away. Those things about you that are not useful to him, the chaff is burned away. And the grain goes into the storehouse. The grapes are crushed. <clears throat> These are the martyrs. These have a harder process. And the wine... It's not thrown out. It's valuable. It's life. In the ancient times, wine was life. When you drank the water, you died. You drank wine, it kills the parasites. It's not thrown away. I'm telling you that because Darby didn't understand these things, these Hebrew idioms. I don't know the, the, the condition of his heart. But I do know the code says the Darby rapture and then in that day he crossed over into destruction. Interpret whichever you will about that. I'm not going to state that he fell from grace. I don't know the conditions of his heart. I don't know if he intentionally intended to lead men astray. But I can show you straight fire here. Right there at the end of the axis term. It sits right on it. So, 
We're going to go and read. These are the names of, of the sons of Aaron, the priests, which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Darby was consecrated as a minister. I mean, he's a minister. Schofield was a minister. MacDonald. They were all in the church. And Nadab and Abihu died before Yahuwah when they offered strange fire before Yahuwah in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. I mean, point blank, period. Death sentence on the spot. Strange fire. This is a false doctrine, folks. And I believe that since I was a 12-year-old boy, Some of you can't handle that. I did find in, in the Yom Yahuwah, which is the day of uh, Yahuwah, the day of the Lord to you Christians, uh, and there was prophets involved here. Uh, so we'll read those and I'll close it out here. Uh, but, you know, I, I wanted to get this video done because I'm fixing it into a few days where I, I'm not going to be able to do videos. And this is going to be in, in, literally in my back with stress and headaches and things like that, like I've been suffering this past week. Um, because these are hard things to tell you. I'm going to lose friends. I'm going to lose subscribers. Yeshua lost subscribers. Did you know that? And so will I. But what do you do? You just sit on it and let them leave. And there's going to be a rapture. There's going to be this escape. Consider that, folks. Six seventh of the church, six seventh of the body, goes through tribulation. One seventh does not. They live among the people in the tribulation. The children of Israel went through the plagues. They came out on the other side. Blessed is he who endures unto the end. All right, so we're going to read from Jeremiah, and this is the 38th chapter, verse 16, and I don't even know why I had it highlighted, folks. This has been a long time since I looked at this. Uh, if, now, uh, if thou wilt go forth with the king of Babylon's princes, and then say to this city, it's been given into the hands of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire. And thou shalt not, then thou shalt not escape out of their hands. I have no idea why I had that highlighted. I guess it's because it was the verse that capped Yom Yehuah, um, which is a day of fire and of darkness. And then Psalms was the very. It must be a promise. Is the highlighted down here, which is uh, thirteen. And he made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of skies. And his brightness that was before him and his thick clouds passed and hailstones and coals of fire. And you also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire. Mm. Uh, so... Obviously, it wasn't a promise. I thought it might have been, from what I've been seeing in the other tables, a promise uh, of deliverance to his people. But uh, it's still an unworked. Just, I haven't finished this. There's still much to be, be found here. But the top portion of it, I'm certain it's clear that Darby inserted this. That is my final conclusion. Now you know why I have stopped talking about rapture. I told you I was going to tell you. And now I have. Now, um, I'll do another part of this video. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I want to do another part because we didn't get into the other reading that I wanted to, which uh, came into. I think I'll close it out. Um, which is um, Second Thessalonians and all these where people think is rapture. And I'm going to show you the error of that. 
uh, in another video. But I showed you in this one, encoded, Darby inserted this doctrine. So, Shalom and Yeshua bless you.